All right, guys, we've got another kind of infamous mega mansion out in Bel Air, California that just hit the auction block after it failed to sell since it was originally listed back in May of 2021. We're talking about 777 Sarbonne Road today, the home that took cosmetic surgeon Alex Kadavi seven long years to renovate prior to listing it for sale for $87,777,777. The place is a pretty incredible property with seven bedrooms, 11 bathrooms, views as far as you can see, top of the line finishes throughout, and crazy amenities like a DJ booth and a glass bridge. It's about as flashy as you can get to with Italian stone, gold light fixtures, a massage room, a koi pond, and an infinity edge pool. And apparently the prior owner of this property paid $500,000 for an easement which preserves the views at 777 Sarbonne forever. The surgeon who built this house had original intentions of building it for himself, but when the budget kind of spun out of control, he decided to pivot his plan and sell it as a spec instead. The house failed to sell after sitting on the market at this $87 million price tag for over a year, even though they did heavy marketing in basically every way you can imagine. And now we have arrived at the auction date where the fate of this home will be decided once and for all. In today's episode, we are going to dive into all of the auction information made available on the auction house's website. Then we'll watch the final moments of this auction together to find out if this home met its reserve price or if it didn't sell and ended up back in the hands of Dr. Kadavi. So I've already done a full video on the history of this property, plus we just did a pretty good recap, so we don't need to get any more into the backstory today. The only update that we need to cover is why this property is even going to auction in the first place. It turns out that after trying to market this home for sale for $87,777,777 for almost a year and not having any buyers, the doctor who built it admitted that he dreamed too big, he spent way too much on the build, and since he couldn't afford to hold on to the house any longer, he did what most other developers who end up in this situation do, he filed for bankruptcy. Now, I'm no financial advisor, and I'm definitely not suggesting that any of us out here should do what these developers in LA do, but it's pretty fascinating to see so many of them borrow millions and millions of dollars from other people to build these luxury mega mansions, and at the end of the day, they either A, sell the places for top dollar and make a fortune, or B, they just file for bankruptcy and say, not my problem anymore. Anyways, the Wall Street Journal reported that in a bankruptcy court hearing in LA on March 30th, the judge said that she would sign off on the sale of Dr. Kadavi's largest asset, which is this house, via an auction with a reserve price of $50 million. We've talked about this in the past, but for anybody who's not familiar with auctions, what a reserve price simply means is that this home will sell at auction to the highest bidder, but the sale will only be approved if that minimum reserve price is met which is 50 million bucks. The article goes on to say that 49-year-old Dr. Kadavi spent around $30 million on the construction of this house, which doesn't even include the $16 million that he paid for the property back in 2013. So that kind of explains the $50 million reserve price. That's almost exactly what he has into this place. Kadavi said that he had purchased and remodeled homes in the area prior to this one, but all of those projects were in the sub $1 million price range, and since he had never taken on a $50 million house before, he didn't have connections with contractors who could take on projects of this scale. I've shared here on the channel before the story of my personal biggest house flipping mistake, and it was for the exact same reason. See, I hired a general contractor to complete work on a $3 million flip project that I was doing, but unfortunately, all of his experience was more in the four to $500,000 flip range. Long story short, everything on that project for me ended up fine in the end, but the whole build process ended up being a total nightmare simply because just like Dr. Kadavi, I hired the wrong contractor for the job. Anywho, they go on to explain that they spared no expense on this thing. They stained the wood floors with 24 karat gold dust. They spent $150 per square foot on marble tile. And then they loaded the house with digital art, mirrored steel gates, that DJ platform that we talked about earlier, and stuff like a tequila bar and a champagne tasting room. I know we need to get to the auction here, guys, but I just want to cover a few more things from this article to sum up the story for you. So the bankruptcy actually happened last year, just a few weeks after the property was listed for sale. Dr. Kadavi's biggest creditor on the deal is Axos Bank, who lent around $27 million to build the home. The last notes in the article are around the fact that stories like this have kind of become common 
commonplace in the LA luxury spec market as of lately. There have been several homes that have ended up hitting the auction block and selling for pennies on the dollar after sitting on the market priced too high for years. If you guys didn't see my video whenever I covered the one auction that happened about a month ago, the auction for 777 Sarbonne is happening on the same website, which is called Concierge Auctions. These guys specialize in selling luxury properties all over the world, and apparently they have a massive network of agents and buyers looking for luxury deals. So first, real quick, I just wanna show you guys what the auction house's website looked like before the auction of this property happened the other day. So at the top of the page, they introduced the place, they call it Palazzo di Vista, and then below that, there's some auction info over here on the left side, which says that it's currently listed for 87 million, the reserve is 50 million. In the middle, it talks about the fees and the commissions that the auction house will get, and then the showing details on the right, which if you wanted to see the house, at this point it's too late. This section here is kind of just like a marketing paragraph. It talks about the lifestyle that you would have if you lived at this property, all of the crazy views that this property has, and then it gets into a bunch of detail about the features and amenities and details of the house itself. Here we can just watch a snippet of this. This is one of the marketing videos that I think the agent Aaron Kerman put together. So we start with the drone shot that just zooms us in over the pool and heads right towards the living room. That's pretty sweet. Those mirrored front gates are awesome, but I'm sure they are a maintenance nightmare. And I've got to say, I really like this house. Like, I like the style and I like the finish detail. It's got kind of a masculine bachelor pad vibe to it, which I'm definitely into that style, but there are some elements, like all this black marble, in a way, to me, already looks a little bit dated. Anyways, you guys can go watch this marketing video yourself if you want. This house is loaded with basically every amenity you can imagine, and it's massive, so the marketing video is pretty long to be able to capture all of it. But let's scroll down to the next section now. So here's the gallery. We went through the gallery also during my last video, but I'll just tap through a couple of these photos now in case anyone didn't see that video, so you can just kind of get a vibe for this house from photos versus that video that we just watched, because that video honestly was kind of fast paced. I think the koi pond is kind of fun. I've never seen a feature like that in one of these mega mansions before, but it would be kind of nice to walk by that every day and see the fish swimming around. Anyways, there you have it. There's the photos of the place. There's the catalog here to the right, which we don't need to flip through every page of this catalog, but this is just basically like a digital marketing brochure that I'm sure they were emailing out and printing out and you could physically grab and go with if you went and visited the house and toured it. This next section, they talk about Bel Air, Los Angeles. If you guys don't know the area, Bel Air, Brentwood, and Beverly Hills are kind of three of the most premium areas that are all sort of adjacent to each other that are all just loaded with luxury shops, luxury homes, and luxury everything. Then here at the very bottom of the page, it tells us some features that there's a $100,000 bidder deposit required, high bids exceeding 55 million will result in a 4% buyer's premium. So that's a pretty hefty premium. That means that the buyer of this house is gonna need to pay about two plus million dollars just to buy the place in fees to the auction house. Down here, there's some bidder registration documents and we don't need to pull up every one of these documents together. I did download them in case there was anything that I felt like was interesting to cover with you guys. The only one that I wanted to pull up and look at that's just kind of interesting to see is this certificate of occupancy for the property. So if you guys remember the one auction that happened last month, did not have a C of O yet. So there was a ton of documentation on that property that talked about all the mechanics liens and all of the issues outstanding with the place that needed to be corrected in order to get the C of O. But this place already has the C of O, which means that whoever buys it is actually allowed to move into it. Okay, so now let's get to the auction itself. The auction window for this property actually ran for four straight days, which I thought was pretty interesting. That was different than the last one. The auction window started on May 5th at 6 p.m. and it ran through May 9th at 6 p.m. So on the evening of May 5th, you can see here that there was actually an opening bid that was placed by bidder 060312 at $40 million, and that kind of kicked things off. You'll see over here, the bid increments are set to $2.5 million, so that means that the next person up to bid has to put in a bid for $42.5 million in order to basically bump it up to the next notch. I checked back in the morning of May 6th, no new bids had been placed overnight. Then I checked back in on May 7th, same story, 
No new bids had come in at this point. The clock was continuing to tick down. And then just to be able to give you guys a play-by-play, -play, I checked in also on the morning of the 8th. The asking price at that time was still at $42.5 million. Now, if you're familiar with these auctions or how auctions like this work, it's definitely not unusual that there was basically no activity on this place for the first couple of days that it was live. I expected it to be dead silent the first couple of days and then a huge flurry of activity to happen basically during the final minutes. All right, when we get down to the final five minutes of the auction, we finally start getting some action here. So bidder number 873784 came in with a $42.5 million bid, which bumped the next ask now up to $45 million. We got a notification that pops up that tells us that any bid placed under the three minute mark will automatically extend the clock back to three minutes. Then the next development here is that the bid increment was actually reduced, meaning that that $2.5 million bid increment requirement was taken away. Just like that, bidder number 618043 puts a bid in for $43.5 million. From here forward, the clock kind of just keeps rolling. It keeps getting extended a couple of times. And then a bid comes in at around 7 p.m. for $44.5 million. And then after that, the bid increment is reduced yet again. There's a bunch more time extensions that happen here, guys. And there's a few bids that start coming in that are much smaller increments at this point for $45 million to $60. And then another one for $45 million $760. And after about 90 minutes, of activity, the auctioneer gives us the last and final call, then concludes the auction with a high bid amount of $45,760,000. Now from this point forward, the next steps on what will happen are kind of unclear. On one hand, we have an interested buyer who is clearly willing to pay big money for this house who just technically won at the auction. But the catch is, remember, that reserve price that we talked about earlier was $50 million, which means that if this sale is not approved, Dr. Kadavi is going to end up right back at square one. What is most likely to happen next is that everything that happened here on the auction day will be presented to Dr. Kadavi's bankruptcy judge. Then the judge will ultimately end up deciding if they approve the sale at this price that's lower than the reserve, or if they would like to see the home go to auction again at some point in the future. My personal guess is that the property will in fact change hands at this price that we just covered today. I mean, the stock market is now in basically a free fall. There are some indications of the real estate market softening. And based on the history of how these things work, another auction isn't necessarily going to just magically bring a buyer who's willing to pay a higher price. I'm sure all of this will unfold here in the coming weeks. So if you're into this story, just make sure to keep your eyes on the headlines and see if the sale was approved. And then if so, who was the buyer? If you enjoyed the episode today, guys, hit that thumbs up button down below or leave a comment. Doing that really helps my channel out a lot. And remember to click subscribe too if you're not already a subscriber because I'm putting new videos just like this one out every week. But that's all I've got for you this time. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, see ya.